Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In today's video, as promised, I'm going to be showing you guys how to tie in wing buds into your chronomids. This certainly has been a game changer for me. I'll be using Semperfly Nano Silk. This is 30 denier, 18 aught, in both black and white. For the butt section of this fly, I'll be using Togan's Holographic Crony Skin in red. For the ribbing section, I'll be using UTC Ultrawire in silver. This is size small. For the Goose Biots, the wing buds, I'll be using Semperfly's Natural Range Goose Biots. You can use cinnamon or their brown color as well is awesome. And then to coat the fly, I'll be using Golf Thin Min Resin. For these chronomids, I do like to use Togan's Curved Nymph. I tie these in a size 14, a size 16, and a size 18, and then pair that with Togan's Tungsten Beads. There's been a lot of debate out there over the years over whether to tie your chronomids with these wing buds or with just a thread thorax. I've done quite a bit of research and development, pitting one fly against the other, identical setup, identical uh, materials on the fly, one tied with a thread thorax, and then one tied with these goose biot wing buds. And time and time again, I find I'm getting many, many more takes with the goose biots. They look identical um, to the natural samples that you'll, uh, you'll throw out sample out of the fish. And uh, just even for a, a vote of confidence, um, I like fishing these uh, wingbud chronomids. They take me a little bit longer to tie. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but if I'm going to fish something, I want to have complete confidence in that fly and make sure that my time on the water is as productive as possible. So I highly recommend watch this video, replay it, uh, learn this technique. It is pretty simple. Uh, just take your time and uh, I assure you, you'll have some great results. So for this particular video, I'm just using a pretty typical um, blended chronomid. This was one of the first chronomids that I learned how to tie this particular color and pattern. Um, I used to use just red thread for the butt section, but here we're using the Togan's Crony Skin. The holographic red really, really is a great um, attractant. It, uh, it, under the water, it looks very similar to the hemoglobin butts that you'll see on some of the chronomid samples. Um, so it's definitely a uh, pretty cool material to, uh, to purchase from Togans and uh, add it to your flies. Just want to make sure that you get that wrapped pretty seamlessly all the way up the, uh, the uh, shank of this fly up to the bead head as it will shine through your nano silk a little bit. And then as you're wrapping this nano silk, you'll see me counter spinning my bobbin and that really just flattens the thread out, separates those fibers. Once you get down to the butt section, you wanna just leave a little bit of gap on each of your wraps and, um, and then it lets that holographic red shine through and look pretty, uh, pretty saucy there for sure. The most important thing, we can't stress it enough when we're tying chronomids, is to focus on a nice seamless taper and getting that profile um, thin and then just slowly building up towards the bead head. This took me a lot of years to find the perfect blend of that profile. And now we're on to the most important part, the goose biot wing buds. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit for you guys. Um, nothing too crazy here, but you want to strip away two of those goose biots. Make sure that you have two great complete um, fibers here, identical in width, and peel those off. And then you just want to stack them, and they do have a natural curvature to them. So you want to make sure that that curve is just facing down because you're going to be folding these up. And then I like to give just a couple of loose wraps to get that onto the hook and then you're gonna push it back and as you tighten that thread, it's gonna wanna cinch it 
um, just a little bit off to the side. So that's where I give it just a little bit of grace there. And once you secure it, it's nice and centered right along your hook point. And then to trim these little tips off, you want to make sure that you have a good pair of micro tip scissors. In this case, I'm using uh, Dr. Slick's razor scissors. They are pretty awesome. These are the arrow scissors, so you can uh, cut some, um, some wire with the base of it. It's got a little notch um, cut out of those scissors as well. So they're a good universal one for uh, cutting thread and cutting uh, wire. With this nano silk, I always stress, do not use your good scissors when you go to cut it. It will dull them over time, so just make sure that you either have a razor blade uh, when you're cutting that thread, or a good uh, pair of all-purpose scissors. And then you can finish building up a little bit of a taper after those goose biots are tied in. That looks pretty darn good there. And then here we're going to add in the white nano silk. Um, this stuff I like using for uh, tying in these goose biots. It does give you a little bit of a thorax because I will color it with this uh, sort of rust color art marker. Um, these are an alcohol based marker. So when you do add your UV resin, they bleed a little bit, which is really nice because, uh, you do not see any individual threads. It just looks a little bit murky and that's what a lot of the natural, uh, thoraxes and heads on these chronomids have. So I highly advise get some of these, uh, alcohol based, um, art markers. They're great for even, uh, mixing in some resins and getting different colored resin as well. Now I like to trim just the base of these goose biots and get some out of the way when you're wrapping up your ribbing section. And then I find my dexterity is a little better if I grab the end of the wire with um, some hackle pliers. And then you can make sure as you're rotating this uh, this rib up that everything is precise and giving equal ribs equal gaps um, all the way up the bug and then once you're happy with that you're going to want to secure uh, your thread just in behind that wire and in front with a couple of wraps and then we'll build that up once you uh, get that wire nice and happy and helicoptered out of there and then go ahead and add a little bit more color to this thread and then what we're going to do here is build up um, a little bit of a base a little thorax with this thread to add to those wing buds and make the transition to the bead as seamless as possible. And then it as well just hide that wire where you've tied it in and uh, make it nice and secure so that won't come unraveled on you. When you're tying in the tip of those goose biots, you want to make sure that you go back about maybe one third um, or a bead and a bit, a bead and a half length back, tie those tips in and then you'll fold both those goose biots forward, one on either side of the bead, make sure that they're nice and even. Uh, you kind of want them uh, rising up from the bottom of the fly uh, to about the mid part of that bead. Take your micro tip scissors and cleanly cut as close uh, to that thread as possible where you've tied it in and then go ahead and uh, wrap a few more times to secure them in and then just to build that ramp right up to the bead uh, so that it looks nice and tapered a little bit more color for good measure you'll see what i mean with this marker once we add that uv resin um, bleeds nicely and then as you're finishing your last few wraps you want to straighten out that nano silk let it lay as flat as possible and a couple whip finishes uh, to finish off this fly here we're going to use golf thin men for my uv resin the stuff is pretty slick you don't need a ton of it to finish the fly a couple of drops one on top that you can spread out with your bodkin and then one under um, underneath the fly on those biots themselves to make sure that they're nice and durable. These flies, you know, that's the goal. They will get chewed up if you do have a good day, um, but they don't cost too much to tie, and they certainly don't take a ton of time once you've mastered this technique. 
um, so don't be don't be shy. But this UV resin um, does give it a little bit of a sheen and some durability as well. It's really nice stuff to work with. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for this video. I do hope that you learned something. Learned a couple little techniques there. Um, huge shout out to all of my supporters. Uh, Togan's Fly Shop. Check them out for all your material needs. I'm using a lot of Semperfly products as well, which are just lights out. Thank you guys from across the pond. And as well, Broken Tippet. You guys are rocking it in the fly fishing industry. I'm super proud to be repping your products and supporting you any way I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, if you see me on the waters, come say hi. And I might even uh, have a fly or two to donate to you. Take care, guys.